All right, welcome guys. Uh, today I want to do a little super breakdown basics video of digital painting. So, um, yeah, let me know if it sounds okay. I mean, it should be fine. I think. But, uh, yeah, so the first step with painting is picking good reference. So either you go out and take your own awesome photo or you got to find an awesome photo and um, what I'm looking for in a in a good photo to paint here is just really clear just a clear image something that's bold it, it's not you know I don't want just everything all mushy and gray I, I, I like things that have some punch and especially where local values are very distinct so um, you know, we can see some very distinct graphic shapes here with the skin on top of the sand on top of the the shirt. So that kind of thing. These photos are all pretty great for getting a clear image. Um, so yeah, and that's like 90% of the battle is just finding a clear image to do a study of. So let's see. Um, where's the one of the dude getting... There we go. So this one, I think, will be good. He, again, his local colors, his his shirt, the the bandolier, the gun, every his skin, everything has a distinct kind of uh, grouped value range to it. And so, okay, let's start with the background here. And, and also, black and white, I think, is pretty good for when we're starting off. So, let's see. We're just gonna fill up the background and make it sort of a placeholder color and actually let me change to uh, HSV here so I can just change the value very quickly and easily okay so down I, I, and I'll, I, I'm also starting from back to front so we're gonna treat even though we're painting digitally um, I'm kinda treating this as a regular traditional painting so we're going from back to front because there are no layers here. So also I'm going to mix from the bottom to the top a little bit with M. Okay, so we also have the benefit of having really clear shadows here. These, these black shapes are super clear. So I'm going to just use F to fill, fill these shapes in. It's kind of like makes life a lot easier when we have clear shapes in the photo. And that, I mean, I think that's a big reason why a lot of really amazing painters, they are also photographers. They know how to take really good pictures. They know how to compose images. I mean, it's like 90% of the battle is just having a good reference okay so another thing is um, proportions and uh, th so drawing is uh, proportions and a lot of great pa painters are also great sketchers great great, uh, great with proportions and one way I like to think of proportions in this case is like maybe we're getting this canvas this this overall square and dividing it up into little sections so if I if I divide the uh, middle or if I find the middle of this canvas it's probably like a little dot that's right there you know just just for reference here this is the middle bottom and on my reference image it looks like that's the, the edge of his shoe so that's basically dividing in half or dividing in sections like thirds if, if you're trying to find you know where's the tip of that gun on the picture it's it's like maybe about here you can even put points in where you think that the thing is supposed to be you, where you start to get into real trouble with drawing is if you are kinda starting from a corner like 
or let's say we start with the bun of his head his or the top of his head and like just start drawing out outward from that one single point I think it's harder to, to work that way because you are judging everything kind of in small relationships to the to the beginning point but I think if you divide the the entire picture into sections like quarters and eighths into like sort of a grid in your head you'll you'll be able to land on uh, more accurate proportions more easily I don't know that's just my idea hey Colby thanks um, so yeah I thought it'd be good to do a little bit of a more informative stream today because usually I'm just sitting here talking to myself just bullshitting but I don't know I think this might be useful for some people that are new new to painting oh fuck what did I just do sorry just zoomed out a little bit okay so I, I might as well go in and try to draw his his belt his head and and also when I'm drawing I like to jump around a little bit so again instead of starting from one corner and like working my way across the page from that point I like to jump my st my start points around so I feel like I get a better feeling for the overall proportions if I jump around a little bit like okay the shoulders here his bag his bag is here maybe his his butt his booties over here and so yeah I'm not I'm not I'm jumping jumping to make sure that I I get the overall feeling first the gesture I guess and yeah drawing I think is all is one of the harder parts about painting um, it takes a long time to get the feeling and to develop your sense of proportion I mean it's a lifelong type of thing so yeah but I mean it's challenging and that's what's fun about this whole thing if it was easy I don't think people would be so interested in in painting and art it's intriguing because it's difficult Okay, so that's that's his baggy thing. Um, we have. I'm kind of not following my rule of uh, of proportion. I'm uh, sorry, not proportion. The, the order. So by order, I mean I, I should do things that are behind first, and then things in front. So I I mean I probably should have put this white shirt before I started drawing that bag stuff on fr on the front. So, but good thing I, I wrote the, the rules up there so I can remind myself what the hell I'm doing. Um, do you blend at all? Yes, you do blend, but you got to do things in order. So first, before you do any kind of blending, I mean, I did blend for the background because, uh, I don't know. But before I do any blending on the uh, character, on the figure, I'm going to try to fill in all the colors first. Like, so the pants... Are just this gray and everywhere the same gray or may maybe actually it's a little bit brighter gray but I want I want to get the general color in first completely just as a as a placeholder so I know where the pants are supposed to be and what color they're supposed to be same thing with the with every s distinct material that's going on in this in this figure it needs to have a placeholder um, color for that material. Does that make sense? And then later on, when once we have all the materials kind of blocked in in one solid color, then we can go back in and get fancy with it. So painting is a game about order of operations. It teaches you um, how to do things. I mean, like if you, the magic thing about order of operations is you could be doing the same exact effort you can put in the same exact time effort you can put lay down the same exact strokes 
but if you put them in a different order you'll get a, a, a wildly different result so that's why we're going from back to front in order so we don't have to you know like if I if I draw this shape first and then I want to make the background red this is much much slower here because I have to trace around trace around what I already did so I'm basically drawing this outline of the shirt twice because I did the order backwards so you see how this takes twice as long or maybe even longer than twice versus if the other way is I'm gonna first draw the background and then I'm gonna draw the shirt see how this is much faster and cleaner so I only have to draw the edge once um, so that's a that's a big thing with painting is the order that you do things I'm, I'm still learning that actually and I, I think it's helping me a lot to just do things in order I mean you can't do every single thing in order but as much as much as is possible you'll you'll save yourself a lot of time um, okay so you see how already we we kind of see the image happening a little bit um, and we didn't do any blending we didn't do any shading at all this is very basic colors this is how you get the image happening as quickly as possible okay then the next thing is we have the skin the skin is a little bit tricky here because it does weird things it, it's like fading to be darker at the top and then it's lighter at the arm like his arm uh, where his elbow is do you guys see that so where his where his uh, elbow is is actually lighter than the background right the, there's a little highlight there that's lighter than the background and then back up the, at the top of his forehead it's way darker than the background so even though it's the same material here his sta same skin material it's changing a lot so that's that's tricky because I mean like with the pants and the, the shirt it's generally the same value but okay so this is our one tricky thing so just keep that in mind that we, we there's it's doing weird stuff and and the way to keep track of it is to just compare it to the background and um, now that I'm looking at this too, I, I feel like the background color is too dark on mine because the shirt looks a little bit, you know, the shirt looks kind of close to the background down here. So it kind of stinks because I already put down the background and now I have to redo everything, but whatever. Or I could, the other option is I can just ignore it and, and try to just go ahead without adjusting the background but yeah and so this value here makes more sense to me because the pants sort of blend into the background here so now now these the pants in the background are matching a lot better um, how's the audio by the way guys are is it clipping am I too loud here on uh, on OBS it looks like it's clipping but I'm not sure okay so just adjusted the the background a little bit we can blend this gradient okay I'll, I'll go away from the mic a little bit so it doesn't clip is this a little bit better okay cool so this is a bit of a nightmare because I I should have paid more attention to the background uh, value earlier, but it's okay. I can try to just work my way around it. Okay, good enough. I can maybe blend up here a little bit. I'm just blending the background because it's kind of a big gradient but for e everything in the foreground I'm not going to blend it yet okay good so this is back to the skin 
the skin should be a tiny bit darker where it uh, intersects or where it, where his forehead is, the top of his forehead, maybe a little bit darker than that. It it's like the top of his forehead is almost melting value-wise into the black. So I might need to go real dark on the on the top. Okay, and then there's a little bit of a black um, under his neck, under his chin. Still, my skin is... Uh, so look at this edge, the front, the far side of his cheek. So it's, from, from on my picture, it's really close to the background, but on the real picture, it's it's much darker than the background it's actually popping off the background so I need to make sure that that happens either by making the background lighter or by making the skin darker I, in this case I think the background is lighter so there's two there's always two ways you can go either adjust the color of the foreground or the color of the background to get the correct relationship between the foreground and the background So I'm I screwed up again. I, I made the background too dark again. But in this case I just I just want to get the relationships correct, so I'll just do like that. He has a little knot on top for some reason. Okay. Notice, yeah, we still haven't gone into any of the materials and started doing any blending or anything like that. What else do we need? So, maybe in this case, the grass also has a little bit of variation. Let's try, maybe a different brush would be good to add some texture be any any kind of brush just so it, to me what I what I'm seeing in the grass is a fade from right here is brightest on the grass and then it fades that way and it fades that way to be darker so I'm I'm constantly looking for first I'm looking for the big shapes like the outlines of the shapes and then next we're looking for the big gradients of so the big fades like um, for example the skin we we identified that there's a big fade from dark at the top and then it fades to light going across his arm um, to the to the lightest point across his arm so again order order matters um, what else? Also, now is I'm I'm also trying to look at the proportions at the same time and see if there's anything drastically wrong. I think his arm is way too short here. So I think the torso, the proportion of the body, like in this area right here, seems fine to me. Maybe the head is a little bit too big on my drawing, but definitely the arm is way too short. So I'm just going to move the canvas over to the side a little bit instead of redrawing the entire torso and everything I'm just gonna redraw the gun and the arm because that's easier so yeah guys it it's a lot of redoing things at least for me I'm not at the level where I can do everything perfectly on my first try <coughs> so it's totally okay if you if you notice something you just gotta catch it early before you've gone down the rabbit hole too much that's the key because <laughs> you know you don't want to spend an hour rendering out his little nipples and everything you know just make sure you catch your mistakes early on and that way you can fix them okay so back to the arm let's try that length Uh, 
Um, oh, I need to turn off that. Okay, so also I'm going to bring in some of the dark lines here to help help the arm out. Can't really see what the shape of the arm is yet, so I need help from the shadows to see what's going on. Okay, I screwed up again. I'm going to restart. The shirt is much longer. Okay. And the arm is pretty bright on this side. Actually, maybe not that bright. It's actually um, really, really similar to the background color there. I think I need to bring the background color over to... So watch, it's gonna be it's gonna be like magic because right now it looks dumb because it, the arm is basically the same color as the background. But once we add in the the shadows there, it's gonna make it it's it's gonna all make sense all of a sudden. I hope. Otherwise, I look like an idiot. But okay, so we're gonna go dark here to catch the bottom. Um, yeah, let's do this. I'm going to chop away some of this. Okay, and then on the top, it's another shadow type thing, but not quite as dark as the bottom shadow. Like this. Up here. Hey Gibbolium, thank you. Glad you're glad you're enjoying it. You gonna do a attempt this thing? Okay, so third time's a charm. I think we got it this time. Yeah, proportions are looking okay. So this, this to me, getting to this stage right here, is the hardest part, guys. Not the rendering of the little tiny folds and the creases and the little folds of grasses. This proportion, the drawing, the proportion, getting all the value relationships blocked in, is the most difficult thing. Um, and it because you're probably gonna get it wrong the first time and you and you have to keep trying and keep adjusting until you you're satisfied okay so don't give up on this stage it's it's the hardest stage um, I I noticed that a lot of painters will kind of skim through this part and try to like save their painting by rendering it a lot and making it super detailed but the problem is your your base your structure is all screwed up um, so you're never gonna get like it's it's much better to build on an, a strong foundation the rest of your detail you know so okay I'm so far I'm I'm happy I'm kind of happy with this structure now after three tries maybe the leg is a little bit long too but <laughs> whatever damn it I keep screwing this stuff up okay so now we can get a little bit more fancy 
with uh, maybe some some more of these these uh, black shadows especially in the pants area the booty area let's get that booty nice and taken care of just like that can be I mean simplified a little bit oh I forgot this his uh, side bag thing but this is nice because I feel like we're going we're heading in a good direction here like it's already looking fine like this could stand on its own as you know like a graphic style version of this picture and then on top of this we can do whatever we want and working this way is, is fun because it's, it's much faster than regular painting I feel like you just break down these shapes into just a couple values it's very simple mirror button I don't know man maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll see we have the technology it's just a couple of people have requested that so it's on the to-do list Okay, so now we're just chilling. It's it's much less stressful at this point because we're making little tiny changes and we're more confident now because we have all the big problems kind of solved. His ear is really bright for some reason. <laughs> he has like a lighthouse ear up here. alright okay so now I feel everything is kind of in there maybe this is a good point where we can start to think about the pants more like the folds and and the different values in the pants so still going from from general to specific so what what's the main idea of this front leg here the main idea is that the knee is brighter and it fades out as we go actually it doesn't well it fades a tiny bit as we go down and as we go back but the knee is is the brightest and then the same thing um, on this leg I think this knee is actually it's a little bit brighter than the the back knee so a tiny bit brighter so we gotta compare compare everything to each other all the time um, Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll leave these these arrows in. Eh, no. Okay, so a tiny bit darker. It's really, really subtle. Another thing I noticed that a lot of um, beginner painters do is when when we're doing these fades here, they go way too drastic on the on the on the difference. You see, like going from this point to the the fade back here is like very very small maybe like from here on the bar to there really tiny so when a lot of beginner painters will will be jumping super far they'll be like down to here for for back here and then all their local colors get screwed up because of that because they're jumping too far so the the the, the far jumps should be f reserved for things like material changes you know like from the skin to the shirt that's a far jump so you gotta save that that juice for the materials okay back to this so let's go a little bit less 
it's almost like imperceptible sometimes you, you don't even see it yourself but subconsciously it's there So you just gotta like move the slider and trust it. <laughs> like you, you might not even be able to see the result until it's you've put in a bunch of stuff. You gotta like Yeah, be very gentle with this stuff down here. Any anytime we have values inside of the material, just be gentle. See, that's already not working there. Two finger undo, it's on the to do list. It's there. But another thing though is I feel like undo is a bit of a crutch also, because we don't have undo in, in traditional painting. And I've noticed that when I put functions on a hotkey or make them easier to access, I definitely use them a lot more. So, and it kind of makes you lazy in a way. Like before I put in eyedropper even, I was making a lot more colors, obviously, and I think it was cool in the limitation of it. But anyway, I'm just rambling now. Okay, so the shirt, any kind of shading on the on the shirt is going to also be extremely subtle. So if I select this white color, and let's say in this case maybe the this corner here is the brightest, and then it fades out. So if I go down a little bit, let's see what that looks like. I think that's reasonable. Maybe this is a, even a little bit too dark, but I think it's reasonable very very slight you can barely see it but that's fine that's actually what we want barely barely visible that's another reason why I like this these old like film photos is they don't capture every single value so perfectly they kinda simplify it for us and that's nice for training. I made that armpit thing too way too big. Another problem that I have and I think is, is kind of a natural human thing is when we see a tiny little detail, we want to make it bigger always. It's, it's almost like the more detailed a thing is, the more our eyes focus on it and, and give it more importance, the bigger we draw it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of weird. So just keep an eye out for that. Like I do, I do it all the time. I'm always drawing detailed stuff way too big or like tiny details way too big. Usually have to adjust.
Okay, so I forgot the other pant leg. Let's do that. Alright, so again, it's fading. Very, very subtle fade from the top to the bottom. So I'll pick the top color, go way slightly little, uh, slightly darker. Stick that in there. That's, that's actually too much. A little bit brighter. Down at the bottom, we can go darker. A little bit brighter. Brighter. Another thing we just added in, in the latest version, is this um, color history thing. So if you change the color, you can see the last selected color and kind of compare it. So that's another nice thing. You know, if you eyedropper, let's say we eyedropper the hair, then we can make a new color and compare it to the hair color. Um, okay, so these pants are looking better. Do you guys have any questions so far on this info? Is this all old news? We might, okay, so we've got our main materials in. We've got slight variations in value within the materials now. Now I think the third thing that we can do to make it even more fancy is mixing. So this is like near the end mixing. And I'm just going to use the uh, M, the mixer brush, and just maybe mix specifically the knee right here. This is just going to blend between the two values like that. So mi mixing, I feel like, is kind of a treat. It's it's really fun, but you really should save it to the end. Or I mean, it's it's yeah. It it doesn't come right at the beginning. It's more of a later thing. How do you think about values when you use color? Well, it's, look, if you go to RGB, it's basically like three black and white value sliders just for each color. So it goes from black to white, but in green channel, black to white in red channel, black to white in blue channel. So you can think of it like that. It's like, it's just value times three. 
Um, let me switch back to HSV because we only need value. So that's why black and white is nice for when you're starting out is because you only have to worry about one instead of three. But I mean, it's the ba same basic idea. It's the, the main thing though is just getting the order. The order that you do things is the most important to becoming um, efficient at painting. So it doesn't matter if you're doing black and white or color, it's the same order of, of operations basically. And I like here that the, the hand, the bottom of the hand, the palm, is basically disappearing into the background, right? The values are so similar. So that's cool. I might even, sometimes it's nice to embrace that and just like let the shape disappear. In this case, it's gone, right? There's no edge there. So that, just leave it, it's fine. Same thing on the shirt here. Up here, like right above the strap, it disappears into the into the sky. So let's try to do that. If you want to emphasize that and make it really happen, you can um, mix it like that to make that edge totally disappear. A lot of painters love to do that. Just they, they purposely, whenever two values are really close together, they just mix it away so it disappears and it, it makes this cool like airy, dreamy kind of effect. You know, sort of like that. You've probably seen it on your, you know, a lot of your favorite painters will do this kind of a thing. And you're like, why does it look so crazy and weird? But it's like, it's just mixing the edges away. Do I need line art? I find color replaces line. Yeah, you don't need line art. You can do draw with shapes. I, l I usually, when I'm painting with this fill lasso, I just draw the shapes in like, like that, and it's fine. Don't need lines if you don't want them. Okay, down at the bottom of the neck, it's a little bit brighter, I think. Let's see how far we can go before it breaks the illusion of the material. You know what I mean? So before, how far high in the value can we go before it doesn't look like skin anymore? Actually, that still looks right. No, it needs to be darker. Right here. Darker. That's why when you look at a lot of um, beginner painters, it kind of looks like their materials are all jumping around and very inconsistent because they're not staying within the range of that material. I'm going to try to get the knee a little bit brighter.
This is such a crazy photo. It's amazing. He kind of looks like um, Kramer. This is Kramer in World War One, doing his his uh, Kramer crazy pose. Okay. Okay, I think the figure is going pretty well. Maybe a little bit more detail in the in the mountains back here. And even with the mountains, the you can you can break them into little materials or like little groups, so that you know we have this light. There's the dark mountain, and then there's the light mountain, and within those they have limited range of values that can exist inside them. So yeah, it's not very sexy, but I think that painting is kind of like a game about organizing. You're organizing values into little categories, I guess. It's not as, um, I don't know, I feel like it's not as artistic as people might think and, and it's more logical it's more it's almost like scientific like just to me it looks it feels like numbers you're getting these values and I don't know Do you consider perspective or just paint? I'm, I'm just painting what I see here. I'm just painting shapes. Not really thinking about anything. I'm not really thinking about, oh, is this a guy? Is this a gun? It's, it's just like a bunch of shapes all stuck on top of each other. I mean, if you another good exercise for that, if, if you want to really work that way or try working that way to shut off your brain is try painting the image upside down cuz then you your your eye is not really used to that cuz our eye kind of tricks us a lot when we're painting it um we have in our mind like an idea of what the shape is and that sometimes will overtake our eye you know what i mean like we you have an idea of what what a gun looks like and then but then also your eye is seeing physical shapes there that, I mean, they're just abstract shapes. So those two things are fighting each other all the time. Like what your brain thinks it should be and what it actually is. So by turning the, th the, the picture upside down, it kind of puts a handicap on your, on your brain a little bit. And it puts more focus on just what your eye is seeing like abstractly.
Okay, another thing I'm noticing is the this bottom left corner of the grass is really dark. It's it's almost black. So let me go back in there and try adding in some of that. Try going up a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes the biggest like value shifts are the ones that we miss totally. It's like right in front of your face the whole time and you don't even notice it, you know? until maybe when you're trying to post it on Instagram and you see the, the thumbnail and you're like, oh shit, it's missing, it's missing the whole, the big idea. So that's not good because like I just ruined everything, all my edges, but whatever. It's okay, we can clean it up a little bit. All right. It's definitely brighter back here than what I have. So another nice thing is like as the painting goes on longer and longer you have more things to reference against and it becomes easier and easier I feel like. Um, the beginning is definitely the hardest. Oh here's another thing guys. Pay attention to these kind of shapes here. Like on the top of the pants I'm talking about right here. You can put in your strokes but most of the time you're gonna have to go f get the background and cut away from it to get the exact shape that you want like that okay like it's much harder for you to go in and try to do this like that and fill it in and, and plus this edge is not sharp there it's much easier to do it in two steps, like first the positive shape and then the negative shape, overlapping it. So that, that's another trick to getting faster shapes, like that. Okay. For example, down here, we can put the dark version first and then get the lighter color and chop away. Seems like a small thing, but it, it adds up. Everything adds up with painting because you're just doing thousands of little shapes all day. It's very tedious work, right? So any kind of trick to make it faster is, is worth it.
What else am I forgetting here? Proportions, flats, shadows, edges. I think we've covered pretty much everything, right? Um, yeah, any questions on the whole process here? We kind of, I hope, broken it down, made it simpler. Um, trying to think of something else to say here about this. Because now I'm just repeating the same stuff over and over. <laughs> you guys are probably like, whatever. Flats? Oh, flats is just like the very first thing we did where we put all these big flat shapes in for all the materials. Maybe that should be called materials instead. Just putting in one basic color for big flat shape. I'm not totally happy with this pant leg. Yeah, it could be called shapes. Maybe I'll call it materials. Well, it's, it's called, I called it flats because of like flat color or flat value of a shape. I don't know, we'll come up with some name for it. Yeah, blocking might be a good name too. Thing is, I never, yeah, I never really learned painting in school, so I don't know what things are called. <laughs> it's just kind of, it's kind of, I know what they are, I just don't know what they're called. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a 3D thing, materials. But I think it's a good way to think about it because materials, like, I mean, you don't, you, you do need to break it down by material as a way to organize. Rake is pretty good for edges too. Um, you can kind of blend with a rake. Like, uh, let me try to... If you want the edge of that shadow to be softer, just rake it a little bit. The grass down here is a little brighter too. Maybe not that bright. That's the nice thing about rake, you can kind of make soft, softer types of values. Uh, 
All right. I think the shadow should be like leaning more. nose in. I screwed up this leg. <laughs> it's okay. Too late now. Next time I'll get it. Okay, another tool we have is a uh, fill gradient. This is nice for these lower shadows down here. Makes a nice soft shadow.
Discord, yeah, we have Discord. Actually, okay, so there's a there's a heavy poly Discord, which is just for this channel, but there's also a um, Warrior Painters Discord, which has a lot more painters. So if you're into painting, you should check out Warrior Painters Discord. Let me get you guys a link. Because these guys are are on live you know chat they do lots of paintings all the time <laughs> but uh yeah like here's one painting that caroline did the other day of larry and yeah it's a fun group so if you want to hang out with people you should check out warrior painters i will give you also heavy poly discord link which is more more for 3D stuff, but there's some people drawing also. Um, I should put these links in the description, shouldn't I? Okay. Will there be some new blender streams this year? Or are you focusing on? Have you I've been thinking about doing a blender, a blender stream, soon. It's been a while. I don't know. Are there any blender people in here right now? Let me know if you want a blender stream. But yeah, I've been focusing on heavy paint a lot lately. This one is ready to go. I've gotten what I wanted out of this picture, this demo. Can maybe try to do another quick one. This I think I spent a little bit too long on this one. Let's see, export um, loyal death of a loyalist. Let's see if exporting works with this new uh, wind tab drivers. Uh, yeah, heavy paint is now updated, or well, the next update will use WinTab drivers instead of uh, Windows Ink. Which Windows Ink is a nightmare, so I'm really happy about this. Um, I'm just testing the WinTab version now to see if it works. So if we zoom in, pretty crappy, but you know, we got the general idea in there. Hmm. 
Okay. Cool. And try another one if there's a simple. Th I mean, this would be another really good example for study because the the local colors are so obvious. So that's really nice. Um, this one's a little tricky because there's lots of like the flag is flip-flopping against the background and the background is also flip-flopping in value so this this might be a nice tricky challenge that's super clear this would be good also super clear man these old photographers know what they're doing crazy I mean, this one is perfect for materials, too. Everything has its own material, kind of. so bad at portraits though I'm gonna fail oh sorry about that here's the link to the photos I'll try this, just the mirror part of this one. Okay, again, start off with the background. Let me try to i um, try my hardest to get the background as accurate as possible because you know it's it's hard to adjust it after so I'm going to use fill gradient to make the top left corner a little bit darker Okay. Fill lasso. Let's go for the dark here. And again, I'm using, I'm cheating kind of by using the border of the canvas as a guide for my proportions. So this, this part where it touches the border is like about half, a little bit more than halfway down. And maybe the, the tip of her hair is like a little bit past halfway to the left. Rectangle for the camera. I'm 
You can use line tool to do these little tripod. Okay. And then the skin. Skin is overall pretty dark. I think that's a good average color for the skin. There's absolutely no white in this whole entire area back here, so I might as well just blast it away with pure dark. And the nose is pretty damn dark. something like that see so yeah, I'm already screwing up <laughs> doing this in the wrong order Ideally, I don't want to be tracing over the same lines over again. So, I don't know. I see a dark triangle there. In front of her eye socket. So in this case, um, there's not many materials, right? It's like we have the hair and the the shirt in are basically the same in in this case because they're they're almost pitch black, and then also the tripod is all almost pitch black except for the highlights. So it's that, and then skin. So I guess we can afford to be a little more detailed in the skin at least on this piece because there's not much else going on. So yeah, I'm going to try. I'm really bad with the uh, faces. I'm trying to get the general colors of the areas like you know the main thing is there's this really dark uh, shadow that's kind of going like 
like that across her, the whole front of her face. So that's the main idea. And there's these dark triangles happening, like dark triangle in front of her eye, dark triangle kind of around the eye socket, around the nose. And then because we're reserving all these values are all pretty low, right? Like the values of our of our face if we check it, like look at the value slider where it is. So the highest value is like slightly lower than halfway. Right? And then the darkest is almost black. So it's all within that range between here and here. So when we put in that super super white um, highlight on top of the eye, it's going to really pop off and stand out. See that? That's what you're looking for, trying to reserve and control and like make sure everything is staying within that range that you specify. And then when you spice it up with those crazy values, it's going to look really cool. Same thing here on the cheek. Seems like there's a little tiny bit of sparkle there. Maybe I'll try with um, circles and a little bit of scatter. Hello, Cyber Nobu. Holy shit, finally caught you live. Been binging your videos through the quarantine and messing with heavy paint. Software's awesome. I'm learning a ton. Awesome. Well, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Trying to be a little bit educational today. I hope I hope it's um, helping. Cause yeah, usually the streams are pretty just, it's just me dicking around doing a painting or something. But today I wanted to be a little more, a little more valuable, more educational value.
Yeah, this picture is awesome. The just the compositions really loving it. Um let's see. Okay, so for metal, it's actually metal's pretty easy. You just basically turn up the contrast a little bit and make those reflections super strong and you got metal so let's see first we're doing the same old um, outlining the color making that one value like we've been doing for everything else uh, the only difference is that we just have these little highlights here and there And it looks super juicy on this film. The highlights are so contrasty. I love it. Actually, if you just f trace the follow the black shapes, then the, the white shapes kind of take care of themselves or the negative shapes. Let's see, that, so the, the camera lens, we have that white in the middle, and then it fades upwards to the top, so maybe it's like that. Although I think on top it's not totally white, maybe it's something like that. So I'm going to just stick that color there, and then mix. There, you got metal. Same thing on the top. There's a little bit of a gradient right here. So I'll get gray, stick in a gray square, and then use mixer to wash that out. Let's see, the bottom of the camera also has, I think it's like a fade from the bottom to the top. It goes from light to dark. Something like in this area here, it goes from light to dark. And then just blend that. Like that. So that's just the, the front face of the camera. And then on top of that, we put all the extra little bits and pieces. So it's much easier to put the gradient first and then the tiny details on top of it. And then also we can chop away. Hello, Rasim. Welcome. Is this an audiobook I'm listening to? No, I'm listening to some music. 
Can you guys hear the music? I thought it was turned off. Do you know Cynics? Yeah, I've, um, well, I don't know him personally, but I know his channel. He does a lot of good art stuff, right? Do, 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 do. Okay, what is what else does this need? We need the the metal, the thing on her her uh, sleeve. So again, metal. How are we gonna do it? Maybe I'll start with the the bright color and do the little shadow colors after. So I'll start off with this bright color here. Then there's a pretty dark. I need to work on not death gripping. I think it's a bad habit of mine to death grip the pen. Makes makes my wrist all shitty. So I'm basically got I got one, two, three, four values for the metal. That's it. And I think we can describe most of it with just these four values and then we can blend if if it comes down to it Blender says it's always interesting how the better the artist, the slower, slower the workflow. Pelang, Mullen, so good yet so slow when they work, but very efficient. Yes, they are very efficient. Um, But Craig, Craig works pretty fast though. He's I've seen demos by him and he's like, he paints like, you're like, holy crap, how did that just happen? It's really magic <laughs> how he paints. It's like it's happening right in front of you but you still don't believe it. Okay, the metal is almost there. I don't think I need to blend. If any, anything, maybe just this part here. But actually, I think it looks better without that blend. Okay, anything else? If you want to get fancy with the metal, you can put a slightly lighter value in the middle of it. Like right there and right there.
I put this little spinny thing in the wrong spot. Let me try that again. I can tell a Craig, quick Craig Mullins story. I think some of you guys have heard this a bunch of times, but um, when I was working on Spider-Verse, he was a painter on that show and he, he works remotely. So he emails his work in um, for, you know, the weekly reviews and stuff. And he emailed he emailed our, our uh, art director, Alberto, his piece. And I guess like Alberto was out for the day and, you know, he didn't see the email for a, a long time. So apparently Craig got nervous and started, he sent like a whole bunch of emails like, hey man, I'm really sorry this painting. I know it's not that great and uh, I, I hope uh, it's okay and blah, blah, blah. Like, and I just thought that's like a funny thing to think about, like Craig Mullins, greatest, cons widely considered to be greatest, uh, or one of the best digital painters, one of the first digital painters, being all nervous about his work, <laughs> still, which is interesting. A lot of, um, and I found that a lot of like these really crazy you know, like, next level artists have that kind of a mentality to them. Like, they're always um, super self-critical. They hate everything that they do sometimes. <laughs> it's kind of, sometimes it, it's not that extreme, but it's, it's just a little funny trait for artists. Because I think you kind of need some of that um to keep pushing yourself i guess it's like an internal drive an inter internal fire that they have i mean i don't know how healthy it is long term but it does help them to like keep at their craft and and keep pushing surprised to see him submit one of his pieces to another YouTube channel for an overpaint. Oh wow, who is doing the overpaint? I wonder. Five minutes in? Is that a channel? No. 
No, the link didn't go through. I think um, for some reason I don't know how to enable links in chat. But well, maybe can you tell us what to search on YouTube? New Masters Academy critique number two. Okay, and check that out later and see see what see who's critiquing Craig Mullins. <laughs> Ilya Maroch Marochnik. <laughs> when you take his class, you get this Discord. Cool. Uh, okay, guys, I think that's it for this painting. I mean, I follow the same process here, just, you know, big shapes first, big values, and then going smaller and smaller until we reach this point where this is still a sketch, right? Like you could spend a whole month making all the little tiny transitions and blends and make it all super rendered, but this is just how far we're taking it for the demo. It's a nice, simple graphic style. Actually, I kind of want to blend the cheek a little bit. So I'm going to overpaint there and then chop it away. But anyway, thanks for joining in, guys. I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know if you want me to do other stuff like this in the future. Maybe, maybe I could do a Blender version like this. Just super basics. Or, I don't know, something else. Or if you have any topics that you want me to cover in the future, let me know. Okay. See you all next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.